Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. Hello friends, I am back with a new video and this video is going to talk about lymphatic system, one of the most important system in our body. First of all, we need to understand the meaning of the word lymph. Lymph is basically equal to blood minus RBC plus platelets plus plasma proteins. It means from blood you remove all these components, RBC, platelets and plasma protein, whatever is left behind is called as lymph. Lymph is colorless liquid connective tissue. The tissue fluid that baths the cell in collected in the lymphatic capillaries. It means that the tissue of our body is fully taking bath in a liquid and that liquid is called as lymph. When you talk about lymph, it has carbon dioxide and metabolic waste. So the most important purpose of the lymph is to provide nourishment, to provide all the kind of materials where blood cannot reach. So we can say that it helps in the transportation of carbon dioxide and the metabolic waste. When you talk about the flow of lymphatic system, we need to understand that they have unidirectional flow. It means it flows from body to the heart. So the lymph, it goes in all parts of the body and from there it goes into the heart. And when we talk about the lymphatic system, what basically it consists of. So we can say it consists of lymphatic capillaries. It consists of lymphatic vessels or we can also call them as lymphatic ducts. And third, it consists of lymph nodes. First of all, we need to understand what are the various lymphatic organs. We can say the most important organs. So the lymphatic organs are, first we have spleen which is present behind the stomach. We have the thymus gland. When you talk about thymus gland, it is present behind the heart. Most important gland responsible for maturation of T lymphocyte and maintaining immune system. And third, the lymph nodes. First, let's understand the properties and then we will see diagrammatically how lymphatic system can be studied. So first I will be talking about lymphatic capillaries. Let's try and understand what are capillaries. So we say that they are small, thin walled and the lymphatic capillaries are lined by endothelium. It is resting on the basement membrane. We can say one end is blind. It means it opens at only one end. If they all lymphatic capillaries, they unite together and they form a duct and the duct is called as lymphatic duct. But most important point that we need to understand with respect to NEET exam that lymphatic capillaries are absent in brain, eyeball, spinal cord, internal ear, bone marrow, etc. This is what we need to understand. And most common lymphatic capillaries that we see, so we can say it is seen in small intestine, we have villi, the finger like projection which is also known as lacteal. Let's talk about the lymphatic duct or the vessels. So they are like veins, means they are having three layers. So what are the three layers of lymphatic vessel? So we say that it has outer one, middle one and the inner one. Outer one is called as tunica externa, middle one is tunica media and the internal one is tunica interna. The lymphatic duct has watch pockets or semilunar valves. We can call them as bicuspid. The valves in case of lymphatic duct or vessels, we need to understand that they are more in number than veins. When we talk about the lymphatic duct, there are two major type of lymphatic duct, right lymphatic duct and the left lymphatic duct. When I talk about right lymphatic duct, so we need to understand one very important thing that it is the smallest lymphatic duct. When you talk about the left lymphatic duct, it is the longest lymphatic duct. So let's understand the right lymphatic duct. As I told you, it is the smallest lymphatic duct. One end is blind and other end is open. So where it opens, so we can say 
that the other end opens into right subclavian vein. When you talk about the right lymphatic duct, it brings lymph from right part of the head, neck, thoracic cavity and right arm. When we talk about the left lymphatic duct, it is the longest lymphatic duct. It opens into left subclavian vein. It collects the limb from three-fourth part of the body and cisterne chile. Now the question comes here, what is cisterne chile? So let's understand. Cisterne chile is nothing but it is dilated sac-like structure present below diaphragm in lumbar region. So it is also one of the area which collects the lymph basically. Now we need to understand the third part. Third component of lymphatic system that is the lymph node. So lymph node is nothing but one common example is that tonsils which is also called as polisman. It is nothing but the cluster of lymph node. Let's try and understand the various types of tonsils that we have in our body. We have the first one as normal tonsil. Second one is adenoid tonsil. The third one is abdominal tonsil. Now what exactly and where they are. So normal tonsil is in pharynx. Adenoid tonsil is in nasopharynx. Abdominal tonsil they are in appendix. Now coming to the most important part the lymphatic system the diagram follow the steps very carefully you will understand very clearly how the lymphatic system works so let us take this to be the blood vessel now in this blood vessels there will be surrounding tissues that we can say so these are all the tissues which are present around the blood vessels now in between these tissues we can see some space now this is the most important space and this space is called as tissue space. So we need to understand that in between the tissues there are some space that is tissue space. Now this is the blood which is going to enter or pass through this blood vessel. Exchange of blood vessel, exchange of blood in fact takes place through capillaries. So through capillaries what happens? The oxygen is given to the cells and the tissues. But some part of the blood oozes out in between the tissue space. What is that some part? It is nothing but blood minus RBC, platelets and the plasma protein. All these three things are eliminated and some liquid oozes out in the tissue space and this liquid is called as lymph. Now what we need to understand here? This all lymph somewhere gets collected in the capillaries. And those capillaries are nothing but lymphatic capillaries. Just for explanation, I am drawing this simple diagram for you to understand. These are all the lymphatic capillaries which are going to collect the lymph which is formed during the blood flow. So now these are all the lymphatic capillaries. Lymphatic capillaries, they will unite together and they will form a duct. And that duct is called as lymphatic duct most important so let us see these are all the lymph which is getting accumulated in the capillaries now it is the duct which we are drawing and now all the duct they are going to meet so many capillaries they meet together and they form the duct which is called as lymphatic duct in the duct what will be present so we can say they have lymph nodes one of the most important part it plays a very important role in screening the lymph or the fluid. So let's understand the lymph node first. So this lymph node why I am drawing it like this it basically it has some filters. What it does it filters all the lymph and it tries to clear many things. First thing what it does it helps in the screening of lymph by phagocytic action. It means if there is any pathogen if there is any bacteria present in the lymph it will be killed by the phagocytic actions of the WBCs present in the lymph node. The lymph node helps in developing the immune system. Lymph node they acts as mechanical filter and it is produced by gamma 
globin in it. So this is all what we should know with respect to the lymphatic system. And most important thing that we need to understand and remember is that it shows unidirectional flow that is the body to heart only. Hope friends you have understood the concept of lymphatic system. Don't forget to give a like. Thank you very much.